Hello guys and welcome back to our Fat Fact series. I'm Ted, your host, and for this Fat Fact, we're going to center on the Hittites. Uh, and the Hittites were people who had uh, migrated into Asia Minor, uh, an area um, also known as the Pontus, and is um, really known cont uh, in contemporary society as the Anatolia. It's this sort of um, the Asiatic portion of the, the nation of Turkey. Uh, and the Hittites um, migrated into this area starting around uh, a little before 2300 BCE. And as soon as they arrived, they coalesced into petty kingdoms um, about 600 years later, around 1700 BCE. And the Hittites were major players uh, in the realms of chariot warfare. Uh, they led the way in a number of innovations in chariot warfare. And this was, uh, this was accommodated because they had the pastures for, for, for which they could uh, maintain large horse herds, uh, upon which to draw um, uh, war chariot horses, and of course horses were native to the area. Uh, the region um, grew wealthy off of their trading, and, and they mainly traded horses and mules to the Levantine cities, uh, the cities along the eastern shores of the Mediterranean, uh, as they were needed for war chariot, and of course the, the mules were needed for pack animals. Now the Hittite kings will go on to unify Asia Minor, bringing all the petty kings in line, uh, and establishing the, the first Hittite old kingdom, well the first Hittite state, composite state, the Hittite old kingdom. And this, the kingdom was centered on the city of Hattusis. Uh, now, the, the, the first uh, of the really great kings in the Hittite tradition were, were, were two men, uh, father and son duo, Hattusilis I and Merciless I. And they're the ones credited with uniting the Hittites and carrying out early Hittite campaigns in the northern uh, Levant, in the, uh, the northern shores of the eastern Mediterranean. Um, their objective was to capture those wealthy Mesopotamian-style cities and to reap the benefits of civilization. Uh, they were fortunate uh, in, in this that during their, uh, their, their quest to do this, during, during their endeavor, the Egyptians were not composed enough to intervene and the Babylonian kingdom was on the wane. Uh, so there was really nobody there to oppose them. Now, the Hittites, uh, they would go on to realign their gods to fit in more with the Hurrian pantheon. And Hurrians were an earlier people who brought in uh, some sort of uh, Indo-European deities into the region. Uh, they adopted literacy. Uh, they began to, uh, to um, pursue uh, access to prestige goods. And they also began to build on the legal traditions and the older Mesopotamian uh, literary traditions. Um, they, they, uh, they began to promote the uh, awareness of the, the myth of creation and, of course, the epic of Gilgamesh. And again, they followed the precedent of their predecessors of Mesopotamia by adopting first the Akkadian language uh, and then by translating uh, Hittite language into Cuneiform. So what we see with the, uh, with the, early, with the old Hittite kingdom is the extension of Mesopotamian customs and practices into a distant land where the geography was very different than in Mesopotamia. They bring this in, this is uh, this Mesopotamian custom and practices into uh, Asia Minor, uh, and for the most part, um, and for the most part, it, it really was just a radical change from the from the vast expanses of mud flats that that characterized Mesopotamia. Um, the areas of the old Hittite kingdom was really a land of steps and rugged terrain. Uh, and it is a testimony to the Hittite kings, to their powers and their abilities, that they were able to take these diverse peoples, uh, the peoples of Asia Minor, and organize them into a competent composite state. Merciless the first uh, was the first king to really organize a projection of Hittite strength. And it would be Merciless the first who would lead one of the most shocking uh, campaigns in the ancient Near East. He would lead a campaign uh, into Babylon, into Mesopotamia, and sack the city of Bob uh, Babylon, uh, an event that shocked Mesopotamia and that was widely recorded. Now, Babylon was the great trade center of the ancient Near East. It was the cultural hub and the, the learning center of the ancient Near East of Mesopotamia. Babylon was not just the most important city of Mesopotamia, it was the number one city of the region. The sack of Babylon highlights how unsuccessful the heirs of Hammurabi had been in maintaining imperial authority. The Hittites traveled some 300 miles down the Euphrates and appeared like out, out of the mist, out of the blue, before the surprise city of Babylon. The attack did not serve Merciless I well. 
um, had the Hittites, uh, uh, had the Hittite elite upon his upon Merciless the first return to Atusus, he was assassinated by a group of angry noblemen who were upset over their king's long absence. Um, and after the death, after the uh, assassination, the murder of Merciless the first, the Hittite kingship was plunged into a succession crisis for uh, for the next few decades. Now, what the Hittite attack on Babylon did do was it allowed the Kassites, an Iranian people, to move in and displace the heirs of Hammurabi. Um, and, uh, and, and that was sort of the scene that greeted the Egyptians had they, uh, had they moved into the, to the Levant, had the kings of the 18th dynasty reorganized Egypt and, and began to project Egyptian strength into the ancient Near East. Um, they were met by the Kassites who had recently come in to rule Babylon and uh, were trying to establish themselves over Mesopotamia. Uh, the Mitanni were in the region known as the Al Jazeera, ruling over the northern Levantine cities. And the Hittites were in Asia Minor, uh, and they were trying to reorganize their fractured kingdoms. Um, they, they would uh, eventually reorganize their kingdom, and they would emerge, re-emerge, um, as, uh, as one of the great powers. Um, and then they would do this under uh, another very remarkable king, a man named Supalamis I. And Supalamis I, he ruled at the time that uh, the king Akhenaten, the Egyptian king Akhenaten, was forsaking the Levantine uh, Empire, the Egyptian Levantine Empire, uh, and, those and those wealthy and much needed provinces. And, and of course, Akhenaten did this because he was focusing on his brand of monotheism, uh, Atenism. Now, the Hittites under Supalamis I were able to overrun the northern uh, Levantine provinces of Egypt. And uh, and really, after the death of Supalamis I, he was succeeded by two of his sons, Merciless II and Muwatalis. Uh, and they uh, both campaigned to hold on to what their father had gained for the Hittites. Uh, and they would battle it out with the heirs of Akhenaten, the, uh, the kings of the 19th dynasty of Egypt. But they would hold on to uh, those cities and they would harness the resources and the institutions of the of those uh, northern um uh, northern uh, Levantine shore cities and they would use those resources to build a very powerful state in Asia Minor um, and that will conclude our look at the Hittites uh, there's a lot more that can be said about the Hittites uh, but we'll cut here hit like subscribe and comment let me know what you thought about this lecture on the Hittites and as always I am Ted and I will see you guys next time for another fast fact